lift has been upgraded to the honeymoon suite. Nice. Lord Cougar says no. Can at least take the hat. Welcome to this week's e-learning blogger masterclass, where I'm joined by blogging superstar Eden Riley from Edenland. The written word fuels many great blogs and Eden's is a special example of that. Today, she's going to explain how to build blogging success through the written word. Hello, my name is Eden and my blog is called Edenland. I'm so glad you're here and quick, we don't have much time. The very first thing I need to tell you is about getting into the groove like Madonna. So to get into the bloggy groove, when you start a blog, a website, a project or any creative endeavor, you need to sit yourself down at your desk turn on your computer and then stand back up again, walk behind your chair, push yourself out of the way and then sit back down. Good. Get out of your own way. Don't overthink things and don't let what other people may think of you cloud your vision. Don't be beaten before you even begin and try really hard to not compare yourself with other people because nobody else is you. Nobody. They are all imposters. Just get on with it and know that you're allowed. Give yourself full permission to write, be fashion-y, comment on social issues, start a business, make that food, whatever it is that you have your heart set on, just do it. Here is my first blog post on the internet written on Thursday the 26th of April 2007. My first sentence was, hello, I can't seem to quite work out where I belong. Ha! Huh. And isn't that funny because I still can't. Who says you have to? The very first rule you must learn about blogging is, there are no rules. Say what you want to say. Don't box yourself into any set genre or niche if you can't think of one yet. My blog used to be called a few different things and one title I had for it once was called Life, It's Nothing Like the Brochure. And I read that saying from my therapist's coffee mug during group therapy one day in rehab. Eventually I decided on simply calling my blog Edenland, joking that it's where I live. I'm a personal blogger, which means I can write about whatever the hell I want to. This is my blog header that you can see now and I actually got graffiti artists to come in and spray my room in my house. Just know that when you start blogging, you will want to give up on blogging a lot. I mean, why even do it when there are already so many established bloggers out there already? What could you possibly have to offer? The answer is you don't even know yet. You can't possibly know where this may take you and it may take you off onto tangents outside of your blog. You might meet people and do things and go places that you never dreamt. For example, I made it out of group therapy and rehab to interview the Prime Minister of Australia because she wanted to reach out to women in the online community. It's a nice feeling to know that you belong somewhere and I've never really felt like I belonged in many places but I've carved out a space here online and it's all mine and I belong and it feels good. We need to do things in the world that make us feel good. So how to be a good blogger. I'll be honest, there are some crap bloggers out there. There's people who are only in it for the fame and fortune. There's people who are fake. There's people who are climby climbers, riding coattails and copying and not bothering to provide decent content. And here's the thing, there is a lot of content on the internet these days. We got sprung by mainstream and it's gotten really busy and really loud and sometimes obnoxious. Remember Dr. Seuss? There's too much stuff. And one day I find myself doing a lot is shutting it all out and I concentrate on where I am at and what I would like to talk about with my readers today and that's it. Be as original and creative as you can and uplifting. I know I'm a bit dark and my life is stupidly hard, especially lately. My brother took his own life. It's horrendous but I'm a personal blogger and I constantly find the right balance with my blog posts and I try and let the light in when I can and I try and ease up and talk about good stuff too. The stuff that nev never gets into mainstream much anymore anyway. A, a really good tip to know is to pick a few social platforms that you like and just stick with those. If you try and be everywhere, you will burn out and trust me, I got burnt out. I like Instagram, some Facebook, a bit of Twitter, but I'll leave all of the meat on my blog. Here's a tip. 
Don't embarrass your friends and family on the internet. It's not polite. One of my big rules is to never embarrass my kids, especially now they are growing older and more Googleable by their mates at school. I write about them a lot, but it's usually how impacted I am by their very existence. One of the main questions I get asked is, how do you think your children will handle learning so much about their mother when they read your blog? And these are my kids and my answer is always the same. I've just told the truth about myself. They might get to know me a bit more than kids usually get to know their parents and they'll see the bad, but they'll also see me overcoming the bad. And that's not such a negative thing really. So it's raining inspiration, hallelujah. See this photo? I don't even know what it means. It's a strange blue peg. It's crazy. Sometimes I take photos of things because they just look cool and I know I can use them someday and I just don't know where, but I do. And if I sit down and really want to write a blog post, but I don't know what about, I scroll through my photos and always, always something will jump out at me. A photo I have taken of something can spur on the most incredible blog posts. Some of the, my best posts were entirely accidental. Another tip is you can keep it short and sweet. Today on my blog I wrote about how a simple game of guess who actually felt like a game of racial profiling with my six year old. Mum, are you black? You can't ask questions like that, but you can and he did. You do not have to be nice or polite on your blog. You can even swear if you want to. Ruffle some feathers, talk about big issues, be honest if you don't know something, learn things, ask your readers, and if you want new readers, go to as many blogs as you can find and find like-minded people and get to know them. Leave comments that you actually mean. Be generous. I almost stopped blogging so many times in the early days because what was the point? But then just one person would say, hey Eden, I haven't heard from you in a while, so I'd update my blog again. And if I would have stopped, this would never have happened. World Vision asked me to blog for them. I got on five planes like an Enid Blyton adventure, terrified but exhilarated. It was incredible. I find the more I open my heart up to life, the more life opens its heart up to me. My voice was hiding here all along. I will always be grateful to my blog for helping me discover my voice. I always wanted to be a writer, and though I never started blogging for that intent, that's exactly what happened. Julia Cameron wrote a book called The Artist's Way and in it she recommends writing your morning pages every morning for six weeks. Just let yourself write, see what comes out. Blogging consistently has done that for me. I have spoken at conferences all around Australia and in the US and I'm constantly blown away by the caliber of women that I meet on the internet. Here is a group selfie from the recent Pro Blogger Conference. Why do us women seem to do the most of this blogging, this writing online? I don't know, but I like it very much. The internet is the great equalizer. I'm a huge believer in people having a voice and especially using your voice for others who are not in a position to do so. So keep blogging. You'll understand what I mean about finding your voice. I promise you will. So that's it. I have a tattoo on my left wrist in cursive script saying know thyself. My brother used to tease me about it and he would grab my hand and put the tattoo up to his eyeballs. Know thyself. Right. Got it, Ede. Thanks for the reminder. But blogging really is a way of getting to know yourself. And remember, after you get to know yourself, you've got to forget yourself. Lose yourself like Eminem and be bold enough to believe that what you say and what you do, who you are, can actually make a difference even to just one person. It can. It has to. We hope you've enjoyed this segment of the Voices of 2014 eLearning Blogger Masterclass. A massive thank you must go to the Voices of 2014 sponsor, Ford, for making today's segment possible. Plus, don't forget to download your fact sheet under the video on this page. We'll see you next week.